crazy. Why don't we switch gears now and talk about some of the charitable and stuff you've done outside of wrestling, things you've done outside of wrestling. What kinds of organizations or things that you've done in your community that you'd like to share with us? I'm constantly like, if you have a birthday and you do one of those Facebook, Hey, donate for my birthday. I do it. I just donated to April's uh, humane society yeah. in Penelope's park for her birthday. Um, I'm all about uh, life has given me a lot of opportunities and a lot of things I probably didn't deserve. So I don't mind giving back. Um, every year for my birthday, I hate receiving gifts. I dislike receiving gifts and my birthday is around Christmas. And I, I know how hard that can be on people that don't have the financial means and they're trying to make something out of very little. So, uh, I ask people to donate to a, a fundraiser every year through my nonprofit branch of life and whatever's donated, I'll match 100%. So last year, I think we ended up doing $6,500 uh, in donations, and I gave that to the local community action program to help with heating assistance. I'm from Maine originally, and the winters up here are brutal. It can get into the oh, negatives, yeah. and a lot of a lot of senior citizens, a lot of people, just uh, one bad choice, two bad choices, and they don't they don't have that, or or maybe it's just bad luck, whatever it is. Um, and I was inspired to do that through my high school English teacher who. Uh, she was all about giving back to the community. She loved Waldo County. So every year she would raise money to give back. And unfortunately she passed away from cancer uh, a handful of years ago, I'd say now. And I wanted to pick up at Slack. So that's what I do every year uh, consistently uh, is I raise money for that cause. I have three scholarships that I give out every year at my old high school, uh, one in honor of my high school English teacher, Another in honor of my uncle who recently passed away and uh, another one for what, but again, uh, I'm always, I'm always trying to help out whenever I can. Uh, I started a nonprofit. We gave away 10 or 15 backpacks this year for back to school and stuffed them with supplies. Uh, it's crazy how much backpacks are going for nowadays too. Wow. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then, and then I, I put on, I put on these local wrestling events sometimes and we donate 100% of what the profit is. Uh, and the wrestlers all, all wrestle for free. Uh, they'll even donate money and go into the community and get sponsors to help out. So that's what I'm about. I'm about helping out the community. I, I'm especially small town, Maine, um, and the military, just whenever I can or whenever the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. April. No, that's awesome. Um, I, well, I, I kind of do what, what Luke does to some degree. I kind of help out whenever I can, whenever the opportunity presents itself. Um, I've been a long time, a long time foster for, uh, animals. So one of oh, mine wow. is, one of mine's right here. Aww. So I, <laughs> I currently have three. Um, but I'm also the, the, cause I, I work for three different, um, rescues where I foster and Luke, thank you very much. He, for my birthday, he donated to one of my, one of my rescues. And then uh, I'm also considered the crazy chicken lady in the city. So I pick up the chickens that nobody wants or the roosters and, and anybody that needs to rehome. And now I'll, I'll hang on to them for as long as I can or take care of them or find them a home or whatever. So I'm one of the, I'm one of those people. So Farm girl. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. And then, you know, also I don't have kids. So, um, I have, I've written a children's book and, um, we donate, I donate every year. We do toys, a toys for tots drive and try and collect as much because, um, my parents managed to hold it together. <laughs> it was a rough upbringing, like I said, yeah. but every year they made Christmas as special for us as humanly possible. So when I grew up with you know, being my family, my dad being military, we lived on one military paycheck and we got what we needed, not what we wanted. But at Christmas time, they made it work. We, 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 they went all out and it was a big deal. And I remember how that felt to um, have things under the tree when we, you know, all year long, we didn't get anything. And for my mom to be baking and, and to, to, to have something to open. And uh, so doing that, for people who don't have much is kind of a 
big deal since yeah. you know. <laughs> so Especially. That's, yeah. That's Especially that's my for- that's my thing. And then currently also have I have a podcast, the A Show, and one of the what we do is we are neutral. We don't um we don't take any sides. We are nonpartisan and we do a lot of research and have on a lot of people who donate their time to come on and help with whatever's going on currently to help people understand what's going on. Um, and I would say we bring we we bring the missing information to the people because a lot of people, well, we, we are not ever really told the whole story of things. We're told things out of context. We aren't given enough information to make educated decisions. So what we do each week is do as, as much as we humanly can with real research and real experts. We bring them on to fill in the blanks of, for what people need to know. Yeah, it's always good to learn as much as you can about stuff, even if it's something that you know that you don't necessarily agree with, but you learn different sides of every story yeah. that possible. So right. it's interesting. And you had mentioned you have a book out too. Tell me about that. How did that get started? Oh, uh-huh. uh, it was a school project. Actually, I went back to school, so I have a. It's a uh, called Monty: A Tale of No Tale. It's based oh, okay. on the Hans Christian Andersen Ugly Duckling. And it's about mm. how the queen gets a corgi. It was kind of based off of one of my own uh, corgis because you can rescue purebred dogs. So if you, I know a lot of people have a thing for corgis and Frenchies and everything else right now. There are purebred rescues. Um, a lot of the, you no, know, a lot of them do have degenerative um, health issues. So, but if you are willing to work with that, a lot of them have been surrendered. And I've I've had three corgis that have had health issues because of that but yeah it's it was it was um kind of inspired by my corgi and my chickens and it's about how the queen got one of her corgis and basically because he had no tail and short legs he was living on a farm and he was considered ugly and everybody picked on him and he learned that he had to go somewhere else he was not in the right place at the right time where his talents and his look would be more useful so there are places where you can go or not having a tail and having short legs is very beneficial. Unfortunately, that farm was not it, but sometimes you just have to go where you're appreciated. Doesn't mean that you're ugly. It just means you're not in your right spot. So. Very cool little twist on the classic fairy tale. So it's pretty cool to hear about that. What, What?